America's Old West has long been enchanted and legendary, filled with tales of lawmakers, outlaws, and legendary gunfights. Such a compelling story revolves around the enigmatic character of Jim Courtright, a man who stands between the thin lines, between obeying the law and accepting an outlaw lifestyle. In the midst of his tumultuous journey, Courtright engages in an intense gunfight with notorious gambler and gunman Luke Short. In this video, we dive into the mysterious life of Jim Courtright, the fateful encounter between him and legendary gunman Luke Short, a dramatic clash that left an indelible mark on the annals of the American West. Remember to hit the like button because it helps us a lot. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and press the notification bell to not miss the upcoming interesting videos. Timothy Isaiah Courtright, also known as Long Haired Jim or Jim to Courtright, was born in Sangamon County, Illinois in the spring of 1848. He came from a family of six siblings, four sisters, and one brother. Courtright is known for regularly practicing shooting. It is believed he perjured his age to join the Union Army during the American Civil War, where he served under the command of General John A. Logan. Their bond grows stronger as Courtright takes a bullet for Logan, earning the General's admiration. After arriving in Fort Worth, Courtright took on various roles including Warden, City Police Chief, Deputy Sheriff, and Deputy U.S. Sheriff as well as engaging in activities such as contract murder, private detective, and racketeer. During his journey, Courtright was known for his exceptional gun skills. He was married to Sarah Weeks and even taught her how to shoot a gun. Together, they hold shooting exhibits that require an entrance fee. Furthermore, they became part of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, showcasing their talents. In 1876, Courtright and his wife arrived in Fort Worth. He ran as the first elected governor of the city against four other men and won three votes. Courtright is recognizable thanks to his distinctively long hair and choice to wear two forward-facing revolvers. He's famous for exploiting his badge for personal gain. As field marshal, his primary responsibility was to maintain peace and order in the infamous Hell's Half Acre, the town's red light district. During this period, Fort Worth was a dangerous place. Frequent scuffles between drunks, disorderly conduct, and clashes involving lawmen. Very few people dared to challenge Courtright, and he killed several who did. On August 25, 1877, Vice Marshal Columbus Fitzgerald was killed trying to arrest a suspect. Courtright quickly took action and shot the killer in the night. During his tenure as Fort Worth Marshal, reports indicate that he took the lives of at least four people in melees and gunfights. Many believe Courtright has also weeded out business owners who were reluctant to pay for his protection racket. Most accommodated his request to avoid the risk of becoming a target for his fury and the muzzle of his gun. Many residents have fallen victim to his violent acts and survivors often comply with his demands and make the requested payments. He served as Fort Worth's Marshal until 1879 when he lost the election for the third time. He made the difficult decision to leave his family behind and move to New Mexico, where he was appointed Marshal of the Lake Valley. Later, he found a job as a security guard for a mining operation. Sometime later, while working as a farm foreman, he and his friend, Jim McIntyre, shot and killed two squatters who refused to leave the farm. In 1883, John A. Logan, Courtright's former commander in the Civil War, expressed interest in acquiring the American Valley Cattle Company in New Mexico. Raising concerns about rampant cattle rustling and herd carnage, U.S. Marshal Al Morrison invited Courtright and Jim McIntyre, his deputy, to assist in protecting the land. However, the company's current owners, John P. Casey, W.C. Moore, and Henry M. Atkinson have ambitions to expand their shares. 
They seek to acquire an additional 3,400 acres of land, including water rights, which would allow them to control an additional 3 million acres of prime grazing land. In pursuit, they were forced to relocate about 90 residents from the small community of Rito. In 1884, Courtright found himself in a secure position in Fort Worth, where he made another attempt to establish a detective agency. Meanwhile, in New Mexico, two men stand trial for murder but are eventually acquitted. Law enforcement agencies persevered in their efforts to bring Courtright to justice. A notable individual in Fort Worth during this time was Luke Short, a gunman, gambler, and bar owner. Initially, Short came to Fort Worth from Dodge City, Kansas, where his gambling hobby took shape. During his time in Dodge City, Short befriended a number of Old West celebrities, including Bat Masterson, Jim Masterson, and Wyatt Earp, who also became friends of Courtright. Managing the White Elephant, a pub and gambling establishment in Fort Worth, Short caught Courtright's attention. Since Courtright was running a guard racket at the time, he sought to extort money from Short, realizing Short's formidable reputation. Notably, Short gained recognition as a major shooter thanks to a notable 1881 gunfight that knocked out Charlie Storms at the Oriental Saloon in Tombstone, Arizona. Most historians agree that Courtright offered his protective services to White Elephant, but Short confidently refused, insisting that he did not ask for Courtright's protection. Around 8 p.m. on February 8, 1887, Courtright called Luke Short with a pair of pistols and challenged him to come out of the White Elephant. However, a mutual friend named Jake Johnson intervened, suggesting that they discuss the matter. According to Short himself, both men walked down the street, maintaining a block away until they found themselves in front of Ella Blackwell's shooting gallery, a bar and brothel. Standing only three to four feet apart, they faced off against each other. Words went back and forth, and it was clear that Courtright, who had been drinking quite a lot, acted out of control a lot. Courtright briefly assured him that he was unarmed, even though he was. Courtright then shouted, Don't point a gun at me! With that statement, Courtright pulled out his pistol, and in that moment, seizing the opportunity, Short quickly pulled out the pistol and fired a shot that caused Courtright to lose the thumb of his shooting hand. When Courtright tried to switch his pistol to his other hand, Short fired four times in a row. Courtright fell backwards and died shortly afterwards. Notably, Bat Masterson, who was with Luke Short at the time, witnessed the encounter. In 1907, Masterson published his own account of the incident, providing a more objective perspective. According to Masterson, it was Jim Courtright who started the confrontation by calling Luke Short to meet him on the street. Courtright is said to have carried a pair of pistols during their encounter. Masterson described what came next. No time was wasted in the exchange of words once the men faced each other. Both drew their pistols at the same time, but, as usual, Short spoke first, and a bullet from a Colt 45 caliber pistol went crashing through Courtright's body. The shock caused him to reel backwards. Then he got another and still another, and by the time his lifeless form had reached the floor, Luke had succeeded in shooting him five times. Courtright was hit three times, one shot in the thumb, once on the right shoulder, and once on the heart. The gunfight investigation determined that Courtright was the first to draw his pistol, but it was Short who won in the end. Courtright's inability to fire the shot could be due to a variety of factors. One possibility is that his pistol was caught on the watch strap for a second when he pulled it out. Additionally, it was observed that one of Short's bullets hit Courtright's pistol, breaking it and resulting in Courtright losing his thumb. One other thing was that Courtright's 45 Colt in his right hand was jammed because a bullet prevented the chamber from moving. Short was tried for the shooting, but it was deemed a legitimate act of self-defense and the charges were dismissed. The gunfight became famous due to the reputations of both men. Courtright's funeral was attended by hundreds of Fort Worth residents. He was eventually buried in Fort Worth's Oakwood Cemetery.
Please like and share if you find the video content interesting and useful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and comment below so as not to miss the upcoming interesting videos. Thanks for watching.